Thank you so much for the introduction, and thank you to the organizing committee and the scientific committee for accepting our abstracts and for the nomination. I'm really happy to be here in Bern and to present our study, which is also part of my PhD, study, uh, PhD which I'm doing in collaboration with ASPETAR and also Sports Trauma Research Center. Um, does anyone know uh, who won the cross-country skiing relay in the World Cup in Falun uh, this, this year? I think it was Norway. Does anyone know how, how it went with Sweden? I'm not sure, I don't remember. Well, but anyways, this study is about... <laughs> This study is about predicting time to return to play after acute hamstring injuries. And if I were to cho choose a more simple title, which reflects, uh, uh, reflects precisely what this study is about, I would have chosen something like this. Do we need MRI after acute hamstring injuries? The background for the study is that we know that hamstring injuries are one of the most common or the most common uh, muscle injuries in sports with high speed and power involved. There is a high incidence which seems to remain high uh, with significant time off and high risk of re-injury re as uh, consequences. Our colleague Christian Ayrala in Qatar has reported uh, that the incidence of, among the professional football players are similar with the European professional players, which are reported in the large UEFA studies. And I don't remember the name of this uh, team or which this uh, the team from this player is or this player is from. But anyways, it's just a random player <laughs> grasping his thighs after acute hamstring injuries. And the first question uh, that comes into the mind of this player and into the mind of the most athletes sustaining an acute hamstring injury is, when can I play again? And especially at, uh, on high level, that is also a question by the manager, the coaches, the media, and a lot of also external actors. So to answer this question, clinical examinations and radiology, uh, uh, radiology examinations like MRI is commonly used in order to give the diagnostic information and also sometimes used to trying to estimate when the athlete can return to play. However, there is no consensus about the predictive value of these examinations for uh, estimating the return to play. If you look at the literature, there is uh, the literature reported on clinical associations between clinical examinations and return to play is scarce, and they are characterized, the studies are characterized with a low number and univariate analysis. Same goes also for studies assessing the uh, associations between MRI findings and return to play. More studies are done, but Roerink and colleagues assess the quality of all these studies and in a systematic review recently, and he concluded that owing to the considerable, considerable risk of bias in the studies, there is no strong evidence that MRI can predict return to play. So therefore, the aim of our study was to investigate the predictive value of patient history and clinical examination alone at baseline, and the additional predictive value of MRI findings for time to return to play after acute hamstring injuries. It's a prospective study where the patients were either included into a randomized control trial or a prospective case series. The patients were recruited at, uh, in the walking clinic uh, at our hospital, and they were assessed by one of our sports medicine physicians. They were included if they were male athletes between 18 and 50 years, and with a clinical diagnosis and MRI within five days. They were excluded if they had a re-injury within two months or any of the other exclusion criteria that you see here. We asked about maximal pain at the time of injury using a visual analog scale. We asked about the type of sport and the injury situation. And we asked about uh, whether they had a previous hamstring injury or a previous low back pain. 
Uh, one of the sports medicine physicians uh, did the, perform the clinical examinations using a standardized scoring form. We assessed different hamstring flexibility tests, manual muscle tests, tenderness to palpation, and active slump. From the MRI examinations, uh, one radiologist reviewed all the images using a standardized scoring form based on current literature and he was blinded to the clinical status of the injury. And he assessed whether the injury was negative or positive, the location, the distance from tuber, the extent of edema, whether the central tendon was involved, and we also gave, a, or he gave an overall categorical grading of the injury. The return to play was defined as the number of days from index injury until the athlete was cleared to resume full unrestricted training. And the athletes were either discharged at Aspetar or in their res respective clubs or federations. In the statistical analysis, we did multiple regression analysis. And we created a general linear model where all the variables from the patient history, the clinical examinations, and the MRI uh, were assessed with univariate associations and all the uh, variables with, uh, uh, with a value less than, uh, p-value less than 0.2 were included in the multiple regression analysis. We kept the treatment variables fixed, and then we created two regression models. In the first model, we included only patient history and clinical examinations. In the second model, we also added MRI variables. So if we go over to the results, we included 487 athletes uh, or assessed, they were assessed for eligibility. And then in the final analysis, we included 180 patients. The mean age was 26, and the uh, pool of athletes represented 37 different nationalities with the majority from Middle East countries. Almost 80% played football, or, uh, or, or the other sports represented were futsal, handballs, basketball, and other sports. Here you see the time to return to play uh, for all the athletes. The mean was 21 days, the mean for the MRI positive was 24 days, and the mean for the MRI negative was 13 days. If we go over to the first model, where we assess the uh, association between only patient history and clinical examinations. We, uh, we've, uh, we had four variables uh, remaining in the final regress uh, regression model, showing independent association with time to return to play. The B coefficient that you see here, uh, this one, represents the increase in return to sport per one unit change in the the independent variable or uh, any of the assessments. So that means that if you increase your uh, VAS score from, uh, for example, four to five, you will increase your uh, days to return to play with 1.6. But the important here is the R square value, where zero means no association and one is uh, total association. Everything below 0 0.5 is considered as a weak association. So this model only explained 29% of the variance in return to sport, which means that if you're on a training camp uh, and one of your athletes get a hamstring injury and you don't have access to imaging, you can only say with 29% of the variance uh, when he will return to play. If we then look at the model where we added the MRI, we also had four vari variables remaining in the final model. But as you can see here, the value only increased to 38, 31.8%, which means 2.8% increase in the predictive value of uh, return to sport with the additional MRI variables. So what does, that mean? what does this mean? Like clinically, how can we use this? If we look at this figure, uh, and I'll try to explain it. You see here the actual number of days from injury until return to play on the x-axis. On the y-axis, you see the predicted number of days to play for uh, days for return to play using our model from patient history and clinical examination. 
if we predict if all the if we predict uh, if the predicted value and the actual value were the same for all the athletes, we would have this line. But the regression line is the red line that we see here. The most important are the confidence intervals, which are the gray lines. So if we, for example, predicted uh, that our athlete would return to play after 20 days, we would here underestimate a little bit because the actual number of days is less. But the important here is the wide confidence interval. So as you see, there is a range from 1 to 51 days. That means that you can tell your athlete, well, you can return uh, in between 1 and 51 days. <laughs> and that is not very accurate. <coughs> if we then add the MRI, you see that the confidence intervals are almost the same. So here we can say, well, you can return within 1 and 50 days. That's only one day less. So, of course, there are some strengths and some limitations with this study. We had a high number, and all the, all the assessments and all the study was performed at one study center using standardized examinations, and we used multiple regression analysis, uh, and we controlled for treatment confounders. However, it's, uh, uh, the SMP or the sports medicine physician was not blinded to the MRI, which might create bias. And the return to uh, play decision was done either at the Aspitar or out in the clubs. And we had several examiners. But to conclude, the additional predictive value, for, uh, value of MRI for time to return to sport was ne negligible uh, versus patient history and clinical examination alone. And it seems that, that it's hard to uh, predict time to return to play or time to return to sport straight after injury, only based on the baseline assessments. It might be that the predictive value increase if we perform additional examinations, maybe throughout the first week or uh, during the rehabilitation course. My take home message is trust and focus on your clinical examinations. And if you want to read more, the study has recently been pub published in BGSM, so you'll find it online there. And with that, I would like to thank you for the opportunity to present our study, and thanks to everyone.